Does anyone know if uh, Jeff Anderson is joining today or if he's not going to make it? Uh, sorry, Stuart. <clears throat> yeah, Jeff's not going to uh, to make it today, but okay. um, I spoke with him um, uh, yesterday and he mentioned that uh, you were going to give a talk today on um, the very sun. Yeah, okay. Just uh, yeah, Simon yeah. Prof from, from Armas here is going to, what we'll present. And I guess, yeah, I guess whenever you think we should start, we can get going, I guess. Yeah, um, it's three minutes past, so it's up to you. Um, you know, the, depending on the content, uh, if it jumps straight in, uh, yeah. then maybe we give it to five past. But if it's a slow intro, then, you know, we can start now. Yep, I didn't want to assume I was the only uh, only event, but uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'll, I'm happy to get started. Yep, take it away. Zoom will just show me my windows. Come on, Zoom. There we go. Okay. Just confirm you can see that, okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. We can see that, yeah. Cool, thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, Project Beret Jean. Uh, we're a little bit sensitive about the pronunciation of the name because some people get it further. Um, is all about the verification of attestation. And I apologize for the appalling uh, squeezing into the project name, but we wanted something unique. Uh, and there we go. Um, I do have some preambles, some scene setting on this, which I apologize in advance for, for anyone who's sort of familiar with the technology. Um, I'll go fairly quickly through it. I think it's worthwhile because it emphasizes where we have spent some of our time, um, uh, which, which might not be obvious. So scene setting, um, where, what do you need, what do you need, a need attestation for? Um, attestation helps you understand, identify a machine, identifies the, the state of the platform, um, and, and, and whether it has particular um, um, capabilities, for example, in confidential computing. Um, so attestation, which is the means of collecting evidence um, presented from a root of trust, something, tr something trustable, um, is a, a technique. And there are very many ways takes of, of, of teasing that evidence report out of, out of a root of trust. But the report alone is, 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 is worthless uh, unless you can verify it. Um, and this diagram is, is from the, the IETF RATS remote attestation uh, working group um, and identifies the um, the moving parts, the the the, the actors um, in the verification process. Um, the verifier is at the center of it. Um, the verifier is a logical role. Um, in many cases, it is a, a you know a separate entity, a separate software entity. It can be um, remote to the machine, it can be local to the machine, but it is a, a logical um, role. And the, 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 what we can see here is the fact that the interfaces to the verifier are particularly important, and the su supply chain bits, which I've just verified, are some can can be some of the more complex areas because they are um, governed by um, business reasons, by regulation and, and the like. So they that's that could provide some complexity. And what the verifier is doing is the relying party down on, on, on the bottom corner there, which is the the the, the, the end um, assessor or if you like of the uh, of the, the exercise is try the verifier is providing an, you know, a transitive trust right the way back to that supply chain who are the ultimate authority for that. So just to emphasize that, say, show some of the complexity there, this is a somewhat idealized sort of view of the supply chain. So you've got all the way of, you know, hardware instance match, uh, manufacturing, um, secret provisioning, uh, the addition of firmware, and then the sale of firmware and, and, and updates beyond there. And the verifier, uh, or the verify you know, task has to take inputs from from all of those, and potentially can also take inputs from you know certification efforts, whether that's um, you know something like PSC certified or or something more like um, uh, this, the 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 safe audit stuff. 
If you boil down the process of verification then, um, common to all architectures, what you'll find is that the, the operations are, are, are fairly standard. You, you have to deserialize out of some format, um, do syntax checking, do cryptographic signing. That's core to the unit of trust that you're identifying the, the root of trust and they know you trust it. Um, and then often there's sets of measurements, firmware digests or um, particular configurations or something like that, um, which need to match values which you draw from that supply chain because that is the, you know, that source of truth um, where, where there's things. And you have to potentially do, potentially do that depending on your on the makeup of your attester from um, multiple actors and, and potentially with sort of multiple um, trust relationships, which can be uh, modulated by regulation, things like that. Um, you then have the option in, in some cases, you can just do a mechanical check of, you know, have I do all these changes? But in some cases, then there may be sort of more semantic checks as well. It's like, you know, do I have these three components in, in combination or these three components in combination with a certain certification and stuff like that? Um, and you have to do all that whilst being trustworthy yourself, because it's it's no point in you doing that if someone can uh, influence uh, or, or, or tamper your operations. Um, and in some cases, there may be a privacy aspect as well. You may want to be able to do that and then limit um, you know, what is revealed by from what you've found there. So this is where Verasion comes in. So having um, the, 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 the inception for the Verasion project was, uh, was came out of our, where uh, in particular, with, initially with the PSA, which is more of an IoT um, uh, framework, uh, and then for the confidential compute architecture, we're having conversations with partners and talking about attestation and, and its important role and this verification point. And they were saying to us, well, is ARM going to build and host the verification service? Um, and we very quickly came to, no, that doesn't make sense because there's a whole variety of needs um business business you know imperatives regulatory and things um different crypto from around the world um that needs to do that but we agree it's 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 a it's a big problem if you have to do the verification operation in a custom way uh for every deployment and every deployment need then you know you get variable quality um and and you get a variable uh, level of trust uh, and, and reputation problem there. Um, and also it's, it's, it's a big barrier to entry. So we, 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 we moodled over sort of like how we to resolve these points and we came up with the project Verasion. And the idea of Verasion is it builds software components that can be used for the purpose of verification. Um, chiefly that's focused to being focused on um, the verification services, but not exclusively. Um, and as I, I'll talk a little bit more about sort of how we've taken a component approach and how that's you know that's that's working in different areas. Um, it is an open source project, um, operate full open governance. And although um, it arose in ARM and ARM um, has provided the initial core team, the intent is to have an industry wide scope. So this is a we realize this is a multi architecture problem. Um, and um, the intent is to to approach this as an as an industry with, uh, problem and and so you know as a sort of uh, an industry valuable um, solution. So um, target use cases, um, as I say, um, mostly focused on services because that was uh, a common model and what we're, what we're being asked for. Um, so flexibility is, is intended to be the order of the day for everything. So looking at uh, something you can deploy in a public cloud, a private cloud, uh, maybe even hybrid, um, something potentially even across multiple clouds, things like that. Um, something that can support many uh, architectures, many to attestation formats, or be very targeted and um, will be configured. Uh, something that could support um, multiple tenancy, both in terms of multiple supply chains that you might need to keep the data apart um, and potentially different categorizations of uh, verification tenants, which might be needed to support uh, different policies. But the advantage of doing this in a, in a component is that, um, in theory, um, 
you don't need to uh, to do remote verification all that's that's not the pattern you know you can take these um, software components and deploy them on a local basis I mean I, I, the the test scenarios we have just work in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, just on a, on a single computer you don't need a a full hyperscale cloud to, uh, to 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 run this stuff. We have actually, and we one of our um, one of the groups who are contributing to our community are even looking at how you would take these components and deploy them in in say trust zone uh, for, a, for a sort of a very local uh, trusted basis. Software architecture. Um, the main categories here. One is um, a, 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 trying to break down. Going back to that that original diagram, breaking down the problem. So looking at the problems of how you get values from the supply chain available for verification, and then that task of saying, for all these architectures that I get in, how am I going to do those common tasks for um, uh, you know, breaking down the verification process? And, and, and these are, we've, you know, we have designed pipelines I have more detailed slides I can go into if you're interested, but um, I'll, I'll put those in back up with a minute. Um, then saying, well, what formats are going to come in, acknowledging the fact there are multiple formats out there, um, and it's it's very hard to get established projects to change, so that there are multiple um, evidence formats that come in, um, allowing for multiple potential for multiple formats uh, to come in in terms of the uh, the support supporting data. Though we have um, largely focused on on standard efforts, I'll, I'll talk to that in, in more in a minute. Um, and on how to how to produce results. Well, how do you produce results in the most useful way uh, that come out of that? And then saying, okay, how do you then deploy these components um, that they, they the operations and they are are configurable? And um, you know whether there are tools that that come out of this. Um, Covered a lot of this already. So, you know, again, flexibility looking for multi architecture. Um, we have this, we took the decision to try and embrace wherever possible standards efforts. Um, and, and I had their embrace and extend. So, looking very closely at the work done in the RATS working group, but also contributing. So, um, people in the Varangian team have also contributed to some of the standards work. Um, that's been going on in in, in rats and in, in TCG. Uh, that's in particular in the uh, the co-room uh, data format. We'll talk about that. Um, again, trying to not assume a single um, deployment model. Um, but to make it keep trying to produce things that are, are independently useful. Um, and I think that's been proven to a certain way in that we, we have small communities that are built up around certain components and we know that some components have been used independently of the whole project, which is which is great because they get tested and uh, show, show their value. Um, and we'll pull more in. Um, I pulled out some of the design highlights because I thought they were relevant to the conversation this group was having last week, which was my first first, first time in this conversation, but um, uh, I thought was relevant for things like that. Um, so attestation results, I know the conversation last week was very much about saying, oh, how do we unify the evidence that comes in? Um, Verasian has taken the approach and approach that the, the evidence is, is going to be heterogeneous. There's lots of different things like that. But what you can do is you can produce a consistent result, which is easier for that relying party to consume and then make decisions on uh, for whatever's it for whatever's important. And there's some interesting work that came out of the in the rats group, which is the uh, it's the association results for, results for secure inter interactions, which is um, uh, I'll talk more about that in a minute. So it's a, a way of normalizing data, but then. Um, the work done uh, on top of that, which has been um, contributed and, and implemented with information, is the, the EAT attestation results, which is a way of classifying evidence down into particular groups. So saying, we found these claims um, in, you know, it may have been a blob you, you, you dealt with, but we found these claims and um, we, we were able to match them up to um, particular reference values or whatever. Um, there can be additional claims added as a result of the as a result of the verifier. So, for example, if the verifier runs policy and can make 
rolled up claims uh, from the results of running a policy, those can be inserted into the results or correlate, perhaps correlate to an, an external certification authority. These can be added into sort of so the things that the verifier um, became aware of. Um, and then boiling things down to the trustworthy inspector, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then lastly, it's very important to be able to produce some evidence about the um, how the verif what the actual verification process itself uh, was. Uh, and again, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Well, so what is trustworthiness vector? Can you explain? I'll talk that? more about that in a minute. In fact, actually, on this slide, here we are. Oh, okay. So the 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 the. the Hang on, I can always never remember this. So the attestation results for secure interactions was 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 a piece of work that um, was originated from Cisco because they have a lot of um, different architecture routers in their in their setup, um, and has been contributed by multiple others in the Rats group. And what they wanted to say is, how do you normalize um, trust across a variety of architectures? Um, so what this does is to say, you if you run through the evidence um, and then you make a decision in these areas, in these bullets here, about, for example, you know, do you have an approved set of, uh, of uh, executables? Is this a known trust anchor? I.e., you know, I, I, have you got a trust chain for it uh, or a known key for it? Uh, do you have, you know, is it, is it known hardware with certain attributes and things like that? And you map the uh, architecture specific evidence into these sets and then you come up with a conclusion as for each of these categories, whether it's the evidence is affirming, warning, contraindication, or, or is there no opinion. And that allows the um, uh, a summation to give an overall status. And the EAR um, includes an opinion, uh, opinionated trust vector, um, which is weighed up from the evidence. So what that means is that you can take the approach um, as a relying party of irrespective of the architecture which has um, produced the evidence is if you trust your verifier, and you should trust your verifier in all, all cases, um, then you could, if you want to, just look at the trust vector. You can, if you want, just look at the overall status. Um, or you can go, oh, look at the trust vector and do I care more about the, you know, the hardware capabilities or the whether whether the, you know, the um, Firmware is up to date, stuff like that. Um, this helps in that in that attitude to sort of saying, you know, what is the what is the state of the in a in a in a rolled up way. Is that clear? I wonder what the trust vector is for. Whoever asked that asked that question. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. do you assume that there is some mechanism to actually publish uh, this all these uh, uh, parameters at at certain uh, site that is trusted because you have to verify how do you actually come to that conclusion that this so this is, is this is this is determined by the verifier operation so the verifier will validate the evidence it's received yes um that's you know and then once it's got the valid evidence it then looks at that you know it has an appraisal policy which allows it to say that oh i know that for example um I was able. I was able to to understand the trust anchor which I use for signing. So I can say yes, this is a known instance identity. You know that is a, that is a, that is affirming. However, maybe when I was checking the firmware, um, something was out of date, or I knew that there was a CVE associated with. So I might have a warning or a contraindication on that category. So there's a fairly, you know, a fairly mechanistic um, policy that you can apply. Um, well, and it can, and the, you know, depending on how you construct your verifier, those that policy decision can be, um, you know, influenced by local local um, conditions as well. Does Raceland define? You know, does Raceland define how that policy is represented? Like, is there you know an XML file or something that you know, or is it just is it a? How do you express the um, policy? So there's it's so there's there's two aspects to it. One there is as part of the uh, the architecture plugin, there is a, an, a, a you know there is a, a first opinion of this which is which is in code which says for example you know or if I know I've I have um, uh, looked at all of the software measurements then I'm going to be I'm going to be firming on that. But then Verasion also has a pluggable policy 
system, which takes um, uh, an OPA Rego plugin, which can then go over those results and modify the, the trust vector if it wants. So you can actually, you can actually on a, on a deployment basis, um, override that if you want. We don't want to be too, we're trying not to be too um, prescriptive there. You know, there, there are some things which are clearly uh, indicated by uh, the nature of the architecture, the nature of the evidence you receive, because they clearly fall in some of these categories. And you don't have to be able to produce an, uh, an uh, a flag, um, uh, an indication of all of these. Um, but he, there are some things which you, you can make a strong opinion on from knowing how to publish, uh, to process the data. But it's the best thing I've seen um, for trying to bring the architectures together. Because something, some people work have, you know, some people have extremely detailed um, 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 uh, uh, sort of, you know, digests produced multiple, multiple digests. Some people work of uh, security versions. Um, then you have scenarios, if you, you know, we're talking to the hyperscalers at the moment about things like live firmware update. And actually then you've got, Oh, actually, I have a lifetime of, of you know, of, of different um, uh, firmware on there. It's like, well, how does that apply in this in this scenario? So it's 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 not, there's not a one uh, a one size fits all. But actually, if you you can in most of those cases um, boil those down to actually, I can have a, a degree of confidence in each of these areas um, that I can come up with the trust vector. And if if you are a uh, you know if you are a very uh, detailed processor of this thing there, you still have all of the claim information available so you can go back and counter check it if you want. But this is the this is the rolled up piece. Can can you comment on the last three sub bullets, run, runtime mm -hmm. opaque, storage opaque, and source data? Yeah, Th those so seem to be different from what I've seen in at the stations in the past. They're, they're, they're more dynamic yeah. in a sense. Uh, well, actually, I think runtime, runtime bank, I think the the, the, the source data may be a, a fact. Um, my best summary of these, and I encourage you to go and read the standard, but is uh, the, the is, is runtime opaque says, is there protection for what for things in runtime? So that's kind of, that's kind of like, you know, have I got T like abilities? Um, so, you know, have I got protection for data in use? Um, which you don't necessarily know from just looking at a piece of firmware or a uh, you know a piece of hardware. You have to know that the combination works together. Um, storage opaque is you know do I have do I have protection for my data at rest? Source data is a bit more vague. I think that roughly means that if my uh, a testing environment is dependent on external systems, um, which is more sort of like a composed. Uh, piece probably something more like a, like a cloud system is that whether there is um, a source of proof that those dependencies have been uh, have been successfully brought in. Uh, I, mean, I am I do confess being the most vague on that last one. So we can probably can we say that these three aspects are more endorsements than anything else, right? It's not something you can really verify. You have to trust that either there yeah. was some sort of certification or something. Again, you're again you're you're, you're you're essentially trusting your supply chain there. So, but so that you know your knowledge of the architecture. So I can talk, for example, like on runtime I take a page, I can talk about sort of uh, competitive computer architecture with confidence. Is that you know I can check that that's on, when I'm looking at the um, the attestation evidence. I can say that I know that feature. Um, is is enabled in the architecture. I can know that there's a configuration which says it's turned on. I know the relevant firmware's there that's going to make sure that you're that, that's going to provide the environment to do that. It's like I can be confident that um, uh, I could actually tick runtime opaque that there is a way of um, you know within that environment uh, of protecting data in use. Okay, thank you. And, and if you had like TDX or NDSUV, you'd have completely different sets of evidence, but you could come up with the same conclusion. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, another design highlight, trusting the verifier. Um, and I know this is an issue. It's, um, so it is important that the, the verifier is trustworthy. 
So you could just go, well, I, you know, I trust the key. It's signed with a chain. I, I like things like that. But that may not be enough. Is you know, you actually want to know that the operation uh, of the verifier is 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 used. You want to know. I was talking earlier about which. You know, you can dynamic, have dynamic policies in, in, in there. So you want to know which policy is in use. Um, and you want to know whether it's, it's, it, it's, it, it itself is running in a trusted environment. So you, you have confidence how it be tampered in. Now, two problems here. One is the fact that if you want proof of an environment, you want attestation of that environment, but then you want that to be verified. Purples all the way down. Um, so we have this multiple problems with this. One is that you know, you're, you're accumulating a, a, a potentially a massive amount of data to, to prove all these things. Um, you, do, you don't want that on every attestation result uh, in, in general, but um, you want that to be available for, all, for, for potential audit. So the approach we've taken in Verizon is to say that all of that information um, can be available and there is a, a discovery API which you can use to pull that sort of audit information, which is you know their the native attestation reports um, and you know policy and things like that. And then what goes in the attestation result is essentially an you know an index or a hash of that information. You can you can you can pull later on. So you're you're you can audit an environment to do it. There's also something that we have um, uh, we have experimented with. Um, which is actually make, being able to, if you're running in a trusted environment, in a T environment, then actually um, use the using the getting the uh, the signer key for the um, uh, for the for the for the results to be derived from within that environment, and then therefore that providing a key attestation for that environment, and again making that available. Uh, through the discovery piece process and things like that. So there are, if you if you start thinking about it too too heavily, you start to worry about oh, there's a ton of information you need alongside every every result. But I think it's if you think about it in terms of like, well, how can I do that so I can audit it or I can pull it out of band or do an interim uh, assessment of it, um, then there are ways to do that uh, in, in in audit, uh, which so because. Yeah, we consider that you know, the trust in the verifier is, is, is a key role. Um, and we have considered some of the issues of how you would do this if you are running locally. Um, it's quite hard if it's just in the software, if it's just in the software component to know whether that's, you know, be able to prove to yourself that that's not been um, influenced in some way. Um, Karim, uh, I know this one to talk about this because I know there was questions about this in the last thing. Um, that top right hand, the top left hand corner of the picture I showed as uh, the supply chain. Um, when we started out, we were very aware that a lot of people, uh, if they were producing data out of their production systems, it was in a uh, likely to be in a custom way. Um, hunting around for you know standards work on this thing yielded uh, not very much. There are things like SWIDs around, but they don't really work very well for for firmware. Uh, TCG had some initial work on on on, on firmware, but um, uh, it didn't map very well to, to multiple systems. So um, with within the um, uh, both and unusually, this this is this is being co developed within uh, ITF and TCG at the same time. Um, people who are, who are working in both groups uh, is working on the the, the Corium document format, and Corium is a, a packaging. It's a CBOR format uh, for uh, brevity, uh, a sign sign format, and and it's used for conveying all those useful values out of the supply chain and into a verifier. Um, and, and, and a Corium can contain multiple module identifiers. And what it allows you to do, it builds a builds a picture of um, an attester uh, or the, you know, the 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 features within an attester, and you, and you could can, can create a sort of graph like structure because the the, the individual module pieces uh, contain triples um, which describe the associations of, of data and, and and any components described within each in each module. So you can say this component has reference values X, Y, Z. And then you can actually have another module which perhaps updates or replaces 
um, uh, another mid, so that the kind of values within these things, and you can package all those together in in in, in current. Um, and this allows um, uh, a uh, uh, you know a, a, an expressive um, and um, compound way of, of of delivering data from um, you know from, on a, on an ongoing basis from a supply chain to um, to the verifier role. And um, potentially you can do these in line if you want to do. It doesn't necessarily need to be, need to be ahead of time. Um, and um, should give you, should give you the full uh, expression on that. Um, that's an active piece of work, and I know that the um, there's multi multi parties involved in that. I'm not sufficiently familiar with the. Um, uh, I know this question uh, asked when I was in the meeting last week about the the overlap between. Uh, perhaps co-room and the uh, the safe audit stuff. I'm not familiar enough with the safe audit to to comment on that, but um, uh, the model is 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 very useful. So uh, Verizon project status. Um, it is an active project. Uh, multi contributors. It is, as I say, run with full open governance, even though um, a lot of core team have arm badges. Um, it has regular public meetings, uh, which are fully open. Uh, it has public communication hub. We use Zulip. Um, and there are multiple organizations con uh, now contributing, I'm delighted to say, um, to, to the code base and certainly to the ideas. Um, it's very active in the position. The project is currently part of the Confidential Compute Consortium. That's largely um, because of its roots and because that community is very active uh, in the attestation area, but it does not restrict the project to T use cases. Um, so we are still, you know, we, we, we have contributors still working in the, the IoT space, for example. Was there a question? Nope, okay. Uh, yeah, so it was open project, things like that. Uh, Codebase currently, um, it, it's up and running. We can demo uh, support for end to end uh, on this stuff. Have multiple attestation schemes, um, PSA and CCA, obviously. Uh, TPM, more on a golden image basis. Um, we have support for sort of the event log stuff in the, in the pipeline. Uh, dice has an asterisk because there are many, many different types of dice. Um, and though we've proven the model, uh, at the moment we just have a library which can support the many types uh, rather than specific plugins for a specific set. Um, uh, oops, I put AWS and I meant to say AMD. I apologize to both of those organizations. Uh, that, should, so that should read AMD SEV and AMD uh, SEV SMP. Uh, on yeah. that and Intel TDX. Yeah, I was, uh, I was going to ask this question actually. What yes, is uh, yes. <laughs> I am not before. I will fix that before I send any of these slides out. Apologies. Yeah, that's that's a that's a slip of the <laughs> slip of the keyboard. Yeah. Um, we did do. I, I think the reason that's because I did have a slide which had because we had an experimental uh, version for Nitro AMD Nitro, so that's probably why that was in there. But uh, the, my apologies to both organisations. That should read uh, AMD there. Um, there is a front end REST API for the for the uh, the two pipelines. Uh, you don't have to use that, but it's it, it helps the service deployment. The uh, appraisal policy is is a managed one. This one is over there, and it fits in once you've done all the the, the mechanical processing on the evidence, um, and that uses the open policy agent Rego format. Um, there's tooling for uh, the supply chain. So for example, the co-rooms, you can um, create and sign co-rooms and verify them and, and stuff like that. Um, to, for ease of um, uh, experimentation and, um, and, and demos and stuff like that, we have you know, container deployments um, and CLI tools uh, to, to trigger these things together, um, heavily oriented into the, uh, you know, the, the standards work um, and initial work on things like uh, multi-tenancy, so that there are there are role-based tags on certain uh, act activities uh, and all support. Yeah, I think I deliberately cut it down. I, if you want to, I can do a deeper dive into you know how it all works, but um, I I didn't want to take all of your time. Uh, um, but I, I'll I have to take any questions, or I'll I can happily go further if you're interested. Are you going to share the slides? 
Yes, I'm happy to share the slides. Okay, thank you. Is Any this um, is it hmm. being deployed in production anywhere yet, or is it just still too early days for that? Nearly. Um, Oracle are building a uh, a production service around it. Um, that's not deployed yet, but they are they are trying to build a production service out of it. And another and another party are talking about it. I'm not quite sure what their plans are, but yeah, there are there are there are now intense people are trying to use this for um, uh, production. I'm not sure on what time scale. But it's not it's not in production anywhere, but it is being taken that way. Um, one of the aims, something and something I uh, I didn't point is is one of the intents of the project was always to build um, you know reference deployments, and so far that's just been sort of you know standalone container stuff. Um, on the longer list in the backlog is to build a. Um, you know some uh, deployments in that like reference deployments in a, in in a hyperscaler, which allow us to um, uh, do um, straw man implementations for things like audit logs and stuff like that, and with 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 proper separation. But it was never the intention to build production um, code at the deploy at the you know the actual uh, deployment level. Mostly because we figured we just wouldn't meet everybody's um, DevOps and and you know security standards. It's like you know we we could we could make assumptions and we that we would be wrong compared to a lot of things like that. So we uh, tried to make this as um, you know idiomatic as we can, but not that. But anyway, um, please come and join the party. That's my uh, uh, you know my message. Um, there's lots of. Um, Lots of, lots of, it's a good community and um, you know, lots of intent to sort of drive this further. Uh, I, I got a question. Um, so, and, I mean, I'm kind of new, but uh, looking at different participants and also, I guess, the, you know, the multi parties, right? What, what is the expectation in terms of security? Like, how, 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 uh, because when you, uh, how XNU messages or REST API? Uh, how do you, how, uh, how is that guaranteed that uh, there is no, you know, uh, security issues like uh, middlemen yep. or, you know? Yep. So I think that's, uh, if I go back to the, the picture, the architecture picture, I think yeah. the, you know, what you're, uh, I think the key is that I was, the, the thing I was trying to install earlier is that, you know, relying party, and I don't know if you can see my mouse maybe or it's kind of, Highlighter on there. Come on, zoom, zoom. Oh, zoom's not letting me. Come on. Anyway, okay. Apologies. You can see my mouse. The relying party on the bottom right is 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 it's got a consumer lid, and it's what you're essentially doing is as 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 is is it has to trust the verifier, and the verifier has to you know it's it's providing a transitive trust up to the you know the source of truth, which is in the top left there. Um, so that you know, ultimately, what you're doing is relying party. You're saying, "Oh, I, 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 I do trust, um, you know, the producer of the hardware. I do just trust the producer of the um, um, uh, of the firmware, say. Um, but I need to join the dots all the way up there. So first, you have to say, you know, you have to decide how you trust the verifier. So it's identifying the verifier, making sure its operation. Um, is trustworthy. So that's all the stuff I talked about, about you know, running in a T and making your policy, things like that. And then making sure that the verifier um, can pull in, so the verifier can have policies that says, I will only, potentially says like, I will only accept signed um, co-rims from a certain providers and things like that. Um, that isn't implemented yet, but it's on the backlog. Um, and so you can, you, you and, and that would be established as something the relying party could examine if they want. Um, but basically, you're trying to say that the, you know, the relying party is essentially saying, how do I get all the way to the top left there? Um, and it has to be done with, you know, with a, with a trust chain of saying, okay, there was a signed operation that uh, that somebody trusted. In this case, the verifier on behalf of the relying party. Um, and the relying party can check that because you know there are means they can trust the verify. Um, you could, if the verify was running as a local software component, uh, which is you know uh, swings and roundabouts as the advantage and challenge of that, is that check could be done locally on that signing check and that trust check, but it's just it's moving that role. You're still doing it within that role. 
One other so, so is there any in initialization or some kind of uh, uh, initial setup or provisioning I believe we got to do so that um, you know uh, probably you already explained this but I, I'm trying to understand. so the mo yeah yeah no, that's fine um, so well there's this there's various there's various model there are things you have it takes you take there so the verifier can be configured um to um you know to have to, to be limited in its operations we can only accept certain attestation formats and the, and the like and things like that it can i say can it's it is planned that it it can have um uh, only a specific trust relationship with um this with this with with the, with the supply chain if you want um the model we have is that the um the values that come from the supply chain are pushed into the verifier before the relying party um asks for evidence um that is something that could happen on demand you 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 know though, though that's a model it'd be very easy to build a uh, either you know a sync system on the on the one or a um uh, a caching system if the if the endorsements are in line um to to pull that out and we've also experimented with actually saying that you know if those reference values are not pushed by a trusted party that perhaps they could live in a transparency service or you know where where the the verifier would you know would you would have that same trust if that was a you know publicly made available piece um, um and then you'd start seeing things like inclusion proofs flowing through that thank you there's a lot of things that can be done, um, but we, we need to get there uh, and, and, and well, see a piece of work. Uh, one question around the uh, capabilities of Verizon. Uh, so sure. I'm looking at mostly the former measurements and the yeah. reference Sarah, measurements. So if the reference measurements are uh, made available to Verizon, and as well as the actual measurements from an attester, uh, can verify can the Verizon software um, evaluate uh, both and then uh, provide a status update? Absolutely. So let's if I just I just go down into the architecture. This is this is what verification looks like. Um, so the attestation token comes in. So those are the real values, the evidence uh, that comes in. Um, and and basically, no matter what the architecture, what's going to happen here? Is that uh, these are the these are the operations? Um, so you you're gonna, you're gonna you know identify the trust anchor, uh, deserialize and extract the claims, go get the endorsements which includes reference, which is like these are the approved values. Do that validation, um, um, and then then apply a policy insight, and that maps into that uh, this is the um, is the sort of trusted system. So this is so this is where it rubs into sort of like there's a plugin manager down here, which is where we abstract the architecture, and then the store down here is where you have um, stored or cached um, your all these values that you pulled from the supply chain, and you can see it, you know this is where it's doing uh, an appraisal stuff here. So, so in this picture, are you expecting a standard way to identify? I, I assume that that resolve media types uh, differentiates between, for example, a TDX at the station evidence uh, from AMD SEV, right? Right. So this, so this. Oh, sorry, I clicked. Uh, the plugin manager down here is where is where you 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 it pulls in. The app, the architecture specific knowledge. So all of the, if you like the top, uh, the top line there is the. Um, this is this is true. This is true whether you had CCA, TDX, or or whatever. You would need to do all of these, all of these operations. The details would be different, and the details are within this plugin manager and evidence handler down there. So you have different um, oh, bits of code yes. which are which work within this structure. But but is there a standard way to differentiate between them, but or you just look at the data and try to match it to something? Yeah. It, so it, so the, the, the code is the code the code in the plugin is knowledgeable about how to do to handle how to handle each architecture. Yeah, the interfaces are standardized, 
but uh, as Simon mentioned, the internal plugins have the knowledge about specifics about for comparison. So TDX yeah. versus SUV. Right. I mean, the reason I'm asking is that we have all these issues with uh, how to provide evidence and how to uh, provide the, the 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 schema basically of how the evidence comes. Right. And and, and that sometimes is between devices, even if they're using the same uh, mechanisms, like for example, for SPDM, if you take an FPGA, they provide the information in a certain way, if you take an SSD, it's completely different, yeah. right? And and yeah. and that has been a problem because for the verifiers, you know, yes. to, to just say, well, I can recognize this thing, but there's, if, if there's something that is sort of like it, but not exactly, then the-, the So this, is, this is why we've done this as a sort of component model, um, you know, we, we have thrown lots of different architectures at this, um, and we believe that top line um, is the common uh, practices that you need to do, irrespective of the evidence formats. And then the plugin uh, mechanism gives you a chance to, uh, you know, do that, make those differences, you know, take that code, you know, a minimal set of a minimal set of knowledge and then plug it into this framework and you get the same kind of results all that um uh, the the extended attestation results stuff i was talking about no matter what comes in you get a consistent type of result coming out i think we have and to, we have to uh, yeah uh, sorry, so, so, victory yeah. first i think so maybe victor you are mute you wanted to ask I dropped off, maybe. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Next question, whoever reminded you. <laughs> Simon, yes. So, so here, like, uh, as you explained, we do have the uh, uh, mechanism available to uh, use the OCP safe uh, audit trails, the audit reports to do the validation uh, stage over here and getting the endorsements. We can integrate the OCP safe audit reports over here. Possibly, I'm I'm not very familiar with the with the the, the details of the OCC bureaus. As I understand it, they they have a um, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong. As I understand it, they have a set of known or approved um, uh, like say firmware um, uh, values um, and perhaps some associated extra information like CVEs. So you could pull those in much in the way that, um, so hang on, if I show you another, if I show you, oh, I'm trying to show you. Oh. Right, hang on. Show you an equivalent project. So there is an equivalent on the provisioning pipeline. So this is, though, although this is sort of dedicated more towards sort of, uh, to, towards Curum at the moment, again, the same principle is there. So you could process um, this, this that level of endorsement that that comes in, um, and then that would that would be a form of um, a, a form a form of plugin that sort of you know how that would be relevant to a particular um, architecture. I, I don't know how in the how in the safe stuff the you know perhaps a the the variants of an architecture are uh, risk are, 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 are captured. But it basically okay. boils down to it basically boils down to have you got a value and can you associate it with the component? Can you make a relationship to to something else, um, which is where the, the 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 value of the component stuff comes in because you can make those associations, um, so you know whether it's relevant for a particular um, architecture or not. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. A couple of minutes left. Any more questions? Feel free to um, contact me if you have any further questions. I'm simon.frost at arm.com. Um, or there's, um, I will I will arrange via uh, one of the mods to get these these slides set up and there's links here to the uh, the project, um, Zulip uh, and communication places. Um, and you know, very happy to uh, take any questions, take people through code or whatever. And if you know if 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 the uh, if there is a, a use case which is close 
to where this is. Um, very interesting to see, you know, the, as I say, the, the intention is to produce components. Um, so to see where those, uh, you know, how those components can be repurposed. Are, uh, I guess one ways. question, are there any other like, um, I don't know, competing open source projects or other projects out there, or is this really kind of the only thing you know of that kind of uh, pulls all this together, like as far as a verifier framework? It's the only one I know that does a um, that, that, that tries to take the most general approach. There is the Keyline project, which is much more dedicated to the TPM environment. And actually, the two projects, the Keyline project and the and, and, and Erosion, are working quite closely together um, about to to collaborate on things like um, you know that they, they, they're looking at how they can they pull in our plugin model, and um, you know we're looking at whether we can exploit their uh, event handling to, to if you deploy the two side by side. Um, the COCO project in, in confidential containers project has an abstraction, but it does, it makes a lot of uh, assumptions and we actually have people working, you know, there, there are people from both teams who are sort of working on that one. Um, and there are, there is an integration of uh, Verasion into COCO, uh, whether that grows to be a large one or not, things like that. But I'm not aware of anything that attempts to be as general and component oriented as this. Please tell me if you find one. We'd like to work with them. All right. Thanks a lot, Simon, for presentation okay. today. This is really great. Um, I'll, I'll work with you offline on, on getting to presentation uploaded, uh, both the recording for today and the, and the slides. Um, cool. but yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you very much for the chance to uh, present. Yeah, no, really appreciate, appreciate you coming in. So um, yeah, if there's no more questions uh, on it, then uh, we can finish up five minutes early, which will be a, uh, a record. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's usually uh, five minutes over, but uh, Really great presentation. We appreciate it. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care, folks. Yeah. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I appreciate it.